Hi there. I've been wanting to have this conversation with you for quite some time. It's been about 18 months or so now that I just hadn't felt like myself. 2017 was a rough year for me. It started out with one of my childhood friends of 30 plus years, Brooke, was diagnosed with a terminal cancer. And Brooke and I had grown really close. She became one of my clients in the last five years. And then, of course, when you have that coach and client relationship, it really builds. I mean, it be really becomes a sisterhood. Well, it does for me anyway. So I walk that journey with Brooke pretty much every step of the way. Obviously, what I went through pales in comparison to what her final outcome was. Brooke did lose a valiant fight to that cancer within a seven month period. And throughout that, I was one of her healthcare advocates, pretty much helping her make every decision on her care and just trying to help her process what was happening. And also, I was her spokesperson, keeping everybody updated and all of it just was overwhelming and took um, a toll on me emotionally. At the same time, I'm a mom. <laughs> I have two children. At that time, my daughter was uh, 16. She's 17 now, and she is an incredible young lady, also just fierce and challenging and curious and daring, and she was going through her own growing pains throughout this time last year, which, of course, being her mom, I was going through those <laughs> growing pains with her. I can actually chuckle about it now, but when you're in it, if you are a parent of a teenager, um, you understand what I am saying. It was really rough. Like I said, I was overwhelmed with what was going on, and um, I also am fortunate to have a incredible coaching business and which I devote 110% attention to and everything just really became a lot. So the reason I'm sharing this is because anytime we go through a crisis and maybe your crisis has been different than mine, but there has to be a process in which we are able to manage it in a way where we don't sink along with it. And for me, um, there was three words that I like to use that three different phases that I went through which was grace focus and now resilience and with grace what I mean by that is and what I've learned is you have to really allow yourself a grace period and be patient with yourself and really take inventory and see where you can downsize or scale down to be able to manage everything that's in front of you and allow yourself to be in that moment without trying to jump ahead too much because it can really become daunting when you're really in the darkness like that. And um, it could become emotionally debilitating, which at times it was for me. So what I had to do is I scaled down uh, for years, I was, since 2012, along with my coaching business, I have many women empowering events that I host. And I mean, sometimes it's like four to five a year. So those events had to get put back on the back burner so that I could focus on what was in front of me. I had to have my energy for of course being there for Brooke, for my family, for my daughter, for myself, and for my clients. And anything extra, I had projects that I was really excited to launch last year and different goals and that just really needed to wait. And it's okay when you're in a crisis, you need to scale down. Also, I'm obviously in a routine where I work out daily feed myself well, all those are priorities to helping myself stay healthy, especially when you're in a heat of a battle like this. Those are not the weapons that you want to put down. So I did scale back on my workouts as well. They weren't as intense. 
I wasn't working out as much, but I didn't let them go all together. There were days where I trained with tears streaming down my face and some people might think that's obsessive, but really it's not. It's just, I know what helps me feel stronger, helps me relieve stress. I can't obviously control everything that's going on around me, so I have to be able to control my habits and focus on the behaviors that help lift me up when everything feels like it's crumbling down. And so that was something else that had to get scaled down, but didn't get put down altogether because a lot of times what happens is when we're in a crisis, a lot of people will have the tendency to self-destruct and just stop training. They stop eating or eating too much, overeating, emotional eating. They turn to alcohol and all of those behaviors can actually make things exponentially worse. So choose those behaviors that help lift you up, especially in a time of crisis. I do, however, need to, for myself, get back to my spirit and what fulfills me and what gives me life and purpose and that is my work and, and how I take care of myself and being a role model for my children and my clients and just my legacy. I need to get back to investing in that. So that's where the resilience part comes in and I'm feeling a lot better. Not 100% but way better and workouts have picked up the intensity again and I feel strong and it feels awesome starting to plan events for next year so again I just wanted to share my personal account and maybe you'll take those three words with you grace focus and resilience when you find yourself in a crisis you do have to walk through it there is another side so just hang in there and hang on to the habits that help you feel strong and courageous and you're gonna come through. So for now, I hope that you stay connected with me on my website, coachingthequeens.com, or I'm on Facebook, Lisa Hughes, L-I-Z-A, and also on Instagram. So I'm back, and it feels good.